My mom has always told me I'd always picture my husband over six feet, but your father is only 5'10". If I have never met your father, maybe they will never be you. I know she just wishes I could be a little bit taller, but what if her expectation really came true? On the afternoon of August 5th, 2010, I flew to Los Angeles for a one-year exchange program. It was my first time across the Pacific Ocean and my first time living away from home. I was introduced to this program in late 2009 that offered me a chance to study in America. Tired of 15 years of regularity, I was blindly attracted to this opportunity of change and so-called independence. It was not only quite a mistake, but also a curious surprise. The long flight was exhausting, but I was, I was excited, picturing a fully prepared greeting party at the airport. However, at the exit gate, my host family was nowhere to be found. I anxiously looked around, expecting every single woman to be her, but each smile was rejected by indifferent stares. What's worse, when I caught her in desperation, she told me she would not be there for another two hours. Two hours. Starving and exhausted, I walked to Burger King, only to find out how little I knew about this country and the language. Having trouble telling the difference between a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter, I was greatly intimidated by a six feet tall white guy behind me, who impatiently gave me a death stare. <laughs> not to mention, I was not even fluent in English. I was shocked by everything, as I realized I was in serious trouble. After 10 minutes of struggle, I finally got my first cheeseburger. It did not taste like cheese, it was bitter. For the first time, reality crushed expectation. I was lost, like a drifter in a strange road, and scared, as if abandoned on a desert island. Realizing that I was no longer the little prince, protected by my sweet home, I deeply regretted every unthought and thoughtful decision I had made that led to such desperation. I wanted to go home. But I had no choice. It's not like I quit the first grade performance because of stage fright, or walking out of a piano lesson because I didn't like it. I had no, I had no excuse, and there was no way either. It's like I was forced to the edge of a cliff. If I ever wanted to survive, I had no option but to bounce back, and no one but myself to rely on. So when my mom called me from home to check if everything was okay, I lied to her. I said, Mom, don't worry. Everything is awesome. Unlike before, I was actually proud this time. When my host family finally showed up exactly two hours later, I did not complain, but rose up from my seat and gave them a big hug. Every time the language barrier kept me isolated, I would remind myself of that first day of misery and push myself out of my comfort zone. As I got to learn this new culture, I became more and more used to saying, what's up, instead of, how are you? Not able to drive or willing to bother my busy host family, I biked four miles of mountain road every day to my internship. It was a game of not only a beautiful view of Southern California coastline, but also growing perseverance. Time has blurred my memory, but I will always remember the exit gate, the Burger King, and the feeling of desperation, because that's where this endless journey ever began. And then I came to Asheville School. It was 9 o'clock, August 27, 2011, Asheville School time, Mitchell Hall, my junior year. That was the opening day, and I remember calling Mr. Ewing a student, going on a pleasant tour with Emily Williams and a warm welcome from Jeff Park and Jonathan George. But when I first stepped on the staircase of Mitchell, I was simply overwhelmed because I didn't really know anyone. Coming as a junior meant I was two years behind my classmates. How could people notice a new face like me? Once again, I was miserable and isolated. 
So when I laid down on my bed, staring at the crazily high ceiling of First Lawrence, I was thinking about leaving. But regrets are overrated. The more I thought about it, the more resilient I became. Based on my previous lesson, I just had a blind confidence that things would not be that bad as long as I could keep being myself. I am not going to lie, but that was the best sleep I have ever had here at Astro School. I remember it took me almost an hour to tie my first tie on the first school day. Fortunately, I woke up at 6 o'clock. I remember after my first basketball game, Patricia Moeller walked up to me outside Lawrence and said, Good job yesterday. Till this moment, Patricia, you might not even remember this short exchange. But I just want to say thank you, because knowing that I finally belong here felt really great. It was 10 o'clock, April 18, 2013. Boy Chapel at Astro School, my 19th birthday. When I was sitting on the hot spot a few minutes ago, my mind was empty. Back when I was a young boy, I had never imagined coming to another country for school. And now, I have to rely on my second language for my daily life. Before that interesting Skype interview with Mr. Smith, which essentially convinced me to come here, I had never pictured myself here in Asheville, and neither had I thought that I would love this place this much. It's almost time for graduation, but I'm just not ready to leave. Life is tricky. It puts you in a new place, in misery, and kicks you out when you, when you are deeply in love. It looks like reality never fully matches expectation, but so many wonderful, wonderful things are still happening, and life goes on whatsoever. In the quote that Richard just read, quote, the best things in life are not expected because there were no expectations. But once expectations are reduced to zero, one really appreciates everything one does have. End quote. Things did not turn out the way my mom wanted to be, but what I see is a perfect marriage with sweet complaints. Only when you let go of your nerve to embrace this brutal but irreducible world can you truly liberate yourself from the shadow of your fear. I have learned to lower my expectation because gradually reality goes beyond expectation. I don't know what future has to challenge me, but I believe life has its own magic of making things even better than original plans. Just remember, every day is a blessing and every second is a surprise. Time went by fast. It looks like yesterday I was still that 16-year-old young boy who had no idea what would happen, and now I just turned 19. It's been 2.7 years and 987 days since I first left home. I have been back several times, but my soul has always been on this unexpected journey. The music that Andrew just played is about a breakup. For me, it's a breakup from the past, a transition to the future, a privilege to enjoy the present, and a gift to remember. I mean, who would have thought that one day I will be standing here giving this talk? And who knows what will happen when I walk out of this chapel? Don't let expectations hold you back. In other words, expect what you never expected, and you will just be fine. <laughs>